Alright, hey, welcome back to the third installment of Project Flying Dutchman Build-Up. It's actually been about a month or so since my last installment when we took it out and gave it a little try and uh, ran into a number of steering issues that have taken some time. Right now I'm working on the Winson wing that we're designing for the rear of the car here. Pretty soon we should have this up and fly. And then we'll lay down some more rubber. So follow along. I'm Chuck Fast and this is the Flying Dutchman. The last month has been spent working mostly on the front of the car, getting some spoiler action going up front, and a few other things and working on this steering angle in here which is crucial and uh, we thought we had things looking pretty good last time until I lowered the car the front of the car down about an inch and then we started running into interference everywhere so we continue to work on that So here we are back at the front of the car. I wasn't too excited about this, but you may have noticed it seemed to be sitting a little high in the front. We always hope that when we put these together that they will settle in. And they usually never do. So we have to lower it the hard way, take everything apart. This is what we first cut off, two, two and a quarter coils. And I'm taking another half off. And we're going to see if we can get that front end down where we need it to be. So that will accomplish two things, lower the car and increase the spring rate, which should be good. So the next thing I need to do is take care of this right here. I need to move this steering arm in a little bit in an attempt to rectify this, which are shavings from the inside edge of my C5 Corvette wheel I'm attempting to use on the front of this thing, which is not working out so well. The uh, outer tie rod end is rubbing against the corner inside of the wheel shaved the shavings right off when I did that 180 Friday night with it. So we'll try to move it a little bit here. Well here we are, it's 2.30 a.m. in the morning and I'm still striving to get this thing together. We're back down on the ground. can't get the jack out. That means it's pretty low, doesn't it? Well, it's low now. Yep, now the front's lower than the rear. Okay, I am done for Hey there, welcome to this little piece I call Drifting the Persian Gulf. And if any of you young land drifters out there are watching this, this is about a different kind of drifting. This here is Kuwait. They're back, back at by the ladder. This here is Kuwait. Quite a change up, eh? Well, here's the situation. I quit work on the car in December. I had to take a shakedown cruise on a military sea lift command ship called the PFC Obregon. We took
took it out of dry dock from Mobile down to New Orleans. Now the guy that was doing the welding was Eric over at Winston Metal Fam. He was working on my uh, spoiler for the rear of the car. The Winston Wing. Now originally I had concluded part three here with footage from his shop and from that ship. However, due to my crappy video editing software that I was using on my laptop here on this ship, which I'm currently on, that footage got ate up. So now you see this. I decided to give you a little peek at uh, my next vidcast, which will be entitled Drifting the Persian Gulf. March, and we have completed our secret mission which was to deliver a load of the uh, new fighting vehicles called MRAPs to Kuwait. Now these new armored vehicles are going to save a lot of American lives. I'm on what's called a fast supply ship and uh, we flew across the Atlantic Ocean, delivered our load in Kuwait, and we are now on our way back across the Pacific Ocean on a journey that's going to take us all the way around the world. We literally flew across the Atlantic at uh, 30 knots, the fastest ships on the sea. By now, those maps have been deployed out in the field, and uh, they should be saving uh, our soldiers from uh, those deadly IEDs. Alrighty, this is the way to Kuwait. We've just tied up here in Kuwait. We will be dropping our ramp so that we can unload our cargo. And then we will probably be, be loading up this stuff. Old, used up, broken down war equipment is ready to be retired and returned to from whence it came. Okay, the deck crew is setting up the ramp. They've lowered down the side door, attached the large chain links. Pretty soon they will be lowering the large ramp down off the flight deck with the crane, 36 ton ramp. takes the entire deck crew a good hour to do this procedure. Now the ramp is down and soon the precious cargo will be rolled. All right, they're lighting them off. Going to warm up them big motors. All right, it's 4 a.m. We've been unloading all night. The last of our precious cargo is now gone. In fact, the whole ship has been emptied. And we're loading it up now with all the bit and bruised equipment coming back from the desert. M1 Abrams tank. And this here is the 50 caliber automatic weapon, commonly known as the machine gun. So, I will conclude part three here with a few sea drifting scenes from this journey. And if you would like to see more, just watch for my next vidcast, Drifting the Persian Gulf. And for even more details, go to my MySpace page and uh, check out my sea blog for much more detailed information of this journey. Myself, I'll be looking forward to uh, getting started with 2008, getting back to work on the Flying Dutchman.